Well, trade season has kicked off with a trade sending former Toronto Raptors legend Jonas Valanciunas to the New Orleans Pelicans in exchange for Steven Adams. Someone said Travis Kelsey for Aquaman. I like that kind of deal, and I talked about that. You can check that out if you want. But right now, we're talking about maybe a potential future Toronto Raptors legend. Let me not get carried away and upset every Raptors fan before they even watch the rest of the video talking about Ben Simmons and the links between him and the Toronto Raptors. And let me make it very clear, when I'm talking about trade rumors that haven't actually come from Woj, I'm looking for reliable sources. I saw Mike Stein. Is it Mark Stein? Mark Stein, that guy. He's pretty reliable from what I've known. At least he's got some kind of connections. Kevin O'Connor also said it on a podcast that there is definitive interest between the Raptors and Ben Simmons. So this is not just coming off some Instagram post or some Twitter post that I saw. I'm not doing that. I'm not seeing Shea Gilgis Alexander, the sixth overall pick for the first overall pick from some guy who I've never heard of, no one's ever heard of, and then everyone all of a sudden just runs with it. Now, someone that I haven't heard of that came out with a link between the 76ers and the Raptors suggested that the 76ers were looking for OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet, and a first round overall pick in return for Ben Simmons. No, no. I'll just stop making this video if that is the demands right now. If that is legitimately the demands that Philadelphia are placing on Simmons from the Raptors, I'll stop making this video right now and I'm not talking about Ben Simmons again because that's just ridiculous. Oh gee, no, no. Then you add in Van Vliet and a first round pick, no. No, so we'll not, let's not even discuss that. Let's talk about some realistic trade options. First off, let's just get OG off the trade block. I know I saw a report that came out saying the Raptors don't have any untouchable players, and yeah, OG's not an untouchable player. Let me not get carried away, but he's pretty close to that. He's a very good player that I'd be looking to keep a hold of, and I'd be looking to keep in Toronto for as long as possible while he continues to improve. And let's talk about some potential options for a Simmons trade. Let's do that, right? Okay. Before I even do that, if you could drop a like in the video, subscribe to the channel. If you do, that would be much appreciated. Let's talk about it. Kyle Lowry, sign and trade. You'd have to add in a couple of first round picks there because we know Philadelphia weren't willing to give up a couple of players in return for Lowry earlier in the season. I don't think they're all of a sudden just going to do a 180 and now all of a sudden they're getting rid of Ben Simmons for a 35 year old Lowry who they could get in free agency. I don't think that's going to happen. But if you add in a couple of picks alongside that, Lowry does fit the team. In general, he is someone they would need, but you'd also need to sweeten the deal. A Malachi Flynn, in addition to that, a couple of picks. Who knows, but you'd have to add in some other assets. Lowry is the guy that the deal revolves around, but there'd have to be some other guys. And it's another guy in the similar mold to Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet. Now, Raptors fans, don't get mad. Don't get mad, but Van Vliet and a pick and Malachi Flynn or something. I know, you're hating that right now. You're hating that right now. But you have to look at it from this perspective. If you're Toronto, you're looking to raise your ceiling. We kind of know what Fred Van Vliet is. He's improved, and I rate him as a player. And right now in the playoffs, who would you rather have Van Vliet or Simmons? Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. But if you're looking at raising your ceiling, Simmons is not a bad player. He's not a bad player. It's simple. He had three bad games against the Hawks. He was good earlier against the Wizards. He was good earlier in the series against the Hawks. And then just mentally, he just collapsed. He collapsed. The Philadelphia 76ers weren't good. But let's not act like he's not a good player. And let's not act like he can't give us something similar to this, what he gave us without Embiid last season. He averaged 20, 8, and 7 without Embiid in the 16 games he played without him last year on 62% from the field and 65% from the free throw line. Those are the kind of numbers he was putting up last year. That was when people were like, do you build around Simmons or do you build around Embiid? <laughs> well, I was having that debate as well internally. So that's kind of crazy how far things have fallen. Do you build around Simmons or do you build around Embiid? Well, now you don't build around Simmons, that's for sure. And you're looking to trade him for Fred Van Fleet. No disrespect to the man himself, Freddie Buckets. But no, that is a big fall from grace for Ben Simmons. But that was just last year. This season, he still gave you, what, 15, 8, and 7. He is still an elite defender. That didn't waver in the playoffs. It didn't waver in the regular season. That's what you're getting, and you're hoping for that kind of production when you put him alongside maybe a stretch big in Chris Boucher. Let's talk about the fit. We may as well start with the fit, and you've always got to start with the center. <laughs> you've got to start with the center. Chris Boucher, could he be the guy? I just don't think he's big enough to be a center long-term, is he? He just isn't. You've got Embiid. You've got those guys, Giannis. Guys, you're going to be going up against Brooke Lopez. He just gets bullied. 
I mean, you could have some funky rotations where you have Simmons playing with a second unit and you have guys like Boucher who can stretch the floor. And I'm sure that'll be good for minutes. But in terms of as a starter and just someone playing 35 minutes a night, I don't think Boucher is that guy. I think he's a very good backup center or maybe just he works at different times. Like you could start him in different games, but not overall for the rest of the season. So Boucher is probably out of the equation, which is why they've been linked with Jared Allen, Nerlens Noel, guys of that mold. Freddie Gillespie is going to come back. I don't think he's the answer. I don't think you have to have someone next to Simmons that can shoot the ball. You don't have to. I mean, just getting rid of Embiid in itself is going to free up the lane a little bit more for him. I mean, Siakam isn't exactly the best shooter. Ananobi's a good shooter. You're going to have Gary Trent Jr., Jalen Sucks. We'll talk about that in a bit. We've also got to talk about Simmons a little bit more. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked, but let's talk about Simmons just a little bit more before we talk about the rest of the fit and the center position. A couple of reasons as to why I'd be optimistic he could get back to somewhere around that level when he was averaging those kind of numbers without Embiid or just putting up those kind of numbers in general. For starters, Toronto does have a great track record of development. They've got a good coach in Nick Nurse. They've consistently won a lot. They've got players around him, hopefully, that can help him in the situation just a little bit more than Philadelphia. Philadelphia did a pretty good job at surrounding him with talent, but just a little bit more. And I think it just got to the point where it was mental. Well, no, I don't think. I know it got to a point where it was mental because I literally watched him go from a good, impactful player in the Hawks series to, yeah, yeah, whatever that was, where he was scared that 40-inch Danilo Gallinari was going to come from behind him and block his shot a la LeBron James or Trey Young was in front of him and was going to block his shot a la Joel Embiid. Like, that's what he got to in game six compared to what he was earlier in the series where he was actually looking like a two-way guy that was making a big impact on the defensive end of the floor against Trey Young. And then offensively, he was getting out in transition and it just all fell apart. So it's all mental. I also believe that if you're ever going to get a reality check, if you're ever going to get a kick in the guts or whatever you want to say about it, this was the time. I mean, this is someone that a lot of people have said, does he take this seriously? <laughs> it's crazy to say that about a genuine all-star, someone who's made three all-star games in a row, who's on max money, who's got all of these followers, everything you can say all you want about him. He's done all of this. He's achieved a lot. It's crazy to say that, but there are a lot of people who question, does he actually care enough? He hasn't really worked on his game. He hasn't really improved. He's got better defensively, but I think that's just <laughs> seemed like more of an effort thing rather than some kind of crazy awareness that he's taken up. And this will determine how much he cares. Right now, he's been ridiculed by everyone. He's mentioned it. If he takes this on the chin and then can move on, can improve his free throw shooting, can finally develop a game outside of three feet then we're looking at someone who can deliver on that potential. And just getting back to the ceiling raising point I was making, Fred Van Vliet is a great player, but I think he's capped out at what he is right now. He's a six foot guard. I know I shouldn't say that considering Kyle Lowry was such a great player. I just don't think Fred Van Vliet has quite the feel for the game that Lowry has. Could be wrong, but I'm saying Fred Van Vliet, obviously Lowry is old, so you're happy to do that deal. Simmons, on the other hand, he does have potential. Like, Sometimes you've got to be careful saying potential when it comes to guys like Ben Simmons because you can get caught in a lot of trouble. Like, that would be a lot of trouble giving up OG, Fred, and a first-round pick for potential. But when you're just giving up Fred and a first-round pick and maybe Malachi Flynn, which seems like a lot for Raptors fans, but when you're giving up that for someone who does have the potential... And also, as I said, he is impactful right now. He is impactful right now. He had a bad playoff series, but he is still an impactful player that's going to put up numbers and be good defensively. And let's start with the defense because... OG Ananobi, Ben Simmons, and Pascal Siakam wrap it up, man. Who's scoring on those guys? Who is scoring on those guys? That is a perimeter player slash wing player's worst nightmare. Ben Simmons and OG Ananobi? You can't lie, Toronto Raptors fans. That gets you excited. That gets you a little bit excited, does it not? Ben Simmons and OG Ananobi? <laughs> oh my god. No one is safe. Pascal Siakam's not a bad defender in his own right. He's pretty damn good as well. Those three guys, the versatility one through five with OG and Ben... Yeah, I don't even need to get into it. This is a team that has prided themselves on defense for several years. This year was an anomaly in so many ways, which I'm not going to hold against them. But you bring an OG, you get Ben, 
you get Pascal, maybe Gary Trent Jr., maybe Jalen Suggs. All of a sudden, those are five good defenders. Who are you going to bring at the center spot? I don't know. Does it even matter? Just play those five guys. OG at the center spot, Ben Simmons as someone who can guard the centers as well. Maybe do that. That's probably a little bit too radical for us to mention. But anyways, let's get into the fit as well. Sorry, this video is a little bit over the place, but we're just trying to keep it rolling. Let's get into the fit. Let's talk about what he could look like next to Pascal Siakam, OG and OB. Now, probably draft Jalen Suggs, but we don't know that yet. If you're talking about Jalen Suggs, he's someone who's going to be ready-made. Hopefully, he can shoot the ball pretty well. He's going to have a high IQ. Maybe he's the Lowry replacement, and that's what people are saying. He could play as the two guard next to Simmons, or he could come off the bench and control the bench unit for a while. He's someone that should be ready to play from the get-go. So you're going to get an impactful draftee there. Gary Trent Jr., if you re-sign him, he could play at the three or the two, depending on what's going on with the situation. Another guy who's a plus defender, his shooting is going to be pivotal. I think more than ever, if you do trade for Ben Simmons, again, this is all hypothetical. <laughs> this is all hypothetical. But if you were to trade for Ben Simmons, you need someone like Gary Trent Jr. You need someone who can shoot 40% on a lot of threes, someone who's just going to take a side of threes. It's that simple. You need Pascal Siakam to get back to his best from three-point range. You need other guys to be better to accommodate Simmons. That's the reality of Simmons, and that's why some people are turned off by him. But at the same time, you get that one through five defensive versatility, like I said, alongside OG Ananobi on the defensive end of the floor. In transition, Simmons is still a beast. He is still a great transition player. We saw him shred the Wizards in transition. Can he shoot free throws? No, he can't. He needs to do something about that. But has he shown that he can in the past? Yes. I think that's important to note as well. He shot so badly in these playoffs. It's ridiculous. He literally set a record. But in terms of his free throw shooting before, he has shot in the mid-60s. He's a decent enough free throw shooter. I think he could eventually develop a game outside of three feet. He can be good. He can be good. He can be better. Different situation. Toronto Raptors have a track record of being good at developing players. There's a lot of reasons why you'd be optimistic. And there's a lot of reasons why this trade could be beneficial for the Raptors. Is it a little bit risky to trade for Ben Simmons when he's getting paid so much money and we still don't know if he can actually be a positive performer in the playoffs or much more than just kind of an average performer in the playoffs when you consider his offense and the fact he wasn't even playable in the last minutes of games in the most important playoff series you've played since the Raptors series in which <laughs> Toronto Raptors won? Those are some question marks that you have to weigh up. You have to weigh up 20 8-7 and seven on 62% from the field in the last year that he played without Joel Embiid, including defensive player of the year level defense, or unplayable in playoff games because he couldn't make free throws and he wasn't a threat in the half court. It's tough being a general manager. It's tough being a general manager. I think he can have an impact and I think he's someone who can raise your ceiling. If you're the Raptors and you're looking to do that, Masai has done that before with Kawhi Leonard. Look how that turned out. I am not comparing the two. I'm just making note of that.